in the last video, we talked about what a vector field is and uh, how exactly we could construct a picture of one. And so we saw fun pictures kind of like this one here that resembled, you know, the vector field we had constructed. But vector fields can be used to model a whole bunch of different ideas. Here are just a couple. Right? Maybe a vector field in R3 could be used to model the force of wind at some point in space. A vector field could be used to model the current of an ocean at some point. The vector field could be used to model the force of gravity at some point. It could be used to model the velocity of um, moving fluid at some particular point. So I can use these fields to kind of talk about a lot and describe a lot of different real world phenomena. So take a look here really quickly at example number two, and we'll get the gist of how something like this could work. Maybe say that the gravitational force of an, uh, from an object of mass m, centered at the origin, acting on a small object of mass little m at x comma y comma z, so at the point pointed to by the specter. Okay. Suppose that that force is given by this vector function or sorry, not this vector function, but this uh, uh, function that takes an x, y's, and z's and spits out a vector. Now this formula can look fairly intimidating, but I should just notice that I kind of have the idea here. If I have an object that's sitting at the origin and it's really massive, it's going to exert a gravitational force on a whole bunch of different things that are floating around near it. But depending on how close or how far away these little dots are from the center dot, I might experience the gravity more. So like you and I are on the Earth's surface, we experience like almost the full weight of Earth's gravity. But of course, if you were, you know, like 10 light years away, you're not going to experience like hardly any of the force of gravity from Earth. So uh, you might experience it from other objects. So we can see here that the proximity to this uh, is definitely going to matter. And that's why it's important when I plug in an x comma y comma z for a location, I will then be able to determine the, gravita uh, the, the gravitational force of the object. OK, so let's see. Suppose that a large three-dimensional object has center of mass at the origin. And maybe its mass is equal to 100,000 kilograms. Suppose that there's a small object that's of mass 5 kilograms, and it's located at the terminal point of the position vector 10, 5, 10. So it's at the point 10, 5, 10 in space. Let's assume distance is measured in meters. We could then ask, what's the gravitational force acting on the small object, specifically due to the large object? In essence, we're really just trying to calculate what does this function tell me about an object that exists in this location? Well, according to the formula, it should be a negative amount of force. I should be able to take the small mass, multiply by the big mass, and then use g, my gravitational constant. I then need to multiply by, it seems, or sorry, uh, divide by the magnitude of that x vector which that's not hard to compute. We know how to compute magnitudes. We've done that for a long time now in this class. And then I ultimately will take that and multiply by that particular vector. So notice that I am going to be ending up with a vector here at the end. I have some number over a number times a vector. So if I was to simplify this up as quickly as I can, you'll see that I get negative 500,000 in the numerator times a g. My denominator, if I simplified it out, it's going to be, oh gosh, really big, right? That's, let's see, that's going to be square root of, what is that, 100 plus 100 plus 25. So that's the square root of 225, and then I have to cube that. And then I'm going to multiply that by 10, 5, comma, 10. I think if I was to simplify all of that down, I end up with a fraction that looks like negative 4,000 over 27g, and it gets multiplied by this vector. So ultimately, the vector that I would end up with would be the following. It would be like negative 40,000 g over 27, negative 20,000 g over 27, and finally negative 40,000 g over 27. So this would be the force. Right, that acts on that object. Now, it may seem um, 
like that force is like huge because those are actually you know some pretty big numbers. But um, the actual gravitational constant here, uh, you might know what it is uh, if you've dealt with some of this before. But typically, this constant is approximated at about 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. So this is actually quite small overall. Okay. But again, I can see how this is used in specific examples, that I have a point that I plug in and I get back some vector. Then who knows what that vector could measure. Here it's measuring gravitational force. All right. That concludes this video.